So, uh, what are you doing? This is the dresser I laid out in an earlier video uh, showing how to use SketchUp for woodworking. I've made some small tweaks to it uh, since laying it out. Number one, I had to take a drawer off uh, simply because I didn't have enough materials and I've also uh, reduced the size somewhat. And you'll see more about that in the video. Uh, just was, had to build to what the wood would allow uh, and I had very little waste in the project. Um, it's a pretty long build and I like to include a lot of details so I'm going to break this one into two parts. Uh, I've also, during the construction of this, I took some time off. I went out west. Uh, so I want to get this part out before I forget what I did and I'm looking at the video and trying to say, well, why is he doing that? Uh, but either way, I hope you enjoy it uh, and I'll get part two up very shortly. So the first step is to lay out the rough cuts and this is what's left of my gum stock. After laying them out, I do uh, rough cutting with the chop saw and the stuff is really bowed and twisted. Alright, uh, with everything rough cut, we've got stock for the center side panels, drawer webs. I hope to get two out of this, so this will be six drawer webs five drawer faces stock for the top with some stock left over uh, not shown in case that's not enough I held some in reserve and uh, four styles and four rails so that big stack of uh, rough wood was turned into five drawer faces uh, not cut to width at this point or length because uh, we don't know how the drawers are going to end up. But I went ahead and made the stock just so I've set the best pieces aside. Uh, enough stock hopefully to make two panels. These aren't cut to width yet because it's going to vary uh, to get the most pieces out of the glue up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean rip them and then take them to the bandsaw and resaw them. Styles and rails for the sides are cut to width. We've got our three inch uh, uh, styles, our five inch rails. Then we have our drawer web stock. So we have six uh, cut to width, two inches uh, for the face that will match the rest of the grain of the, the chest of drawers. I did have enough gum for the secondary inside wood, so I milled up some ash and some hickory. Uh, these will be the back uh, styles uh, for the drawer webs and the rails to connect them all and they're all cut to width two inches. It's a big stack. And lastly we have a top stock uh, to make a glue up of a top and these aren't ripped yet and they'll be ripped for the glue up. Uh, so at this point we've got everything to start making our panels and our side uh, frames. So let's get started. The styles and rails get cut to length. Both the styles and rails get a quarter inch groove cut for the uh, panel to sit in. And I like to do that on the table saw. Uh, cut it, rotate it, cut it again, and that keeps the groove centered. You could ignore the, the hand-drawn arc. I was just making a note of where I wanted it, so I got the groove in the right place, but I used a compass to draw a correct arc for the feet. Once drawn, the uh, bandsaw, make short work of it. Sorry about the camera angle, but you'll see I've got to rotate the piece where I normally put the tripod. For fairing, I like to wrap adhesive back sandpaper to the cutoff piece and use it as a sanding block. Once one was fared, I used it with a flush trim or pattern bit to make all of the others match. The rails get a tenon and here I am making the shoulder cut on the table saw. For the cheek cut, I used a tenon jig, though previously, and I think in other videos, I've just used the fence of the table saw. 
since I had it, I wanted to try it out. It was the first time I used it, and uh, it's pretty precise. I like it. The top of the tenon is haunched, so we don't weaken the style, and I'm just cutting off the excess to create that haunched tenon. I don't know what happened with the camera here, but you've uh, seen me struggle with my bench top mortiser a lot, uh, so it's uh, not missing much. Uh, here we are making the uh, mortise deeper for the non-haunched part of the tenon. And though I have a love-hate relationship with my little bench top mortiser, uh, you do have to clean up after it. However, the end result of uh, the mortiser and the mortise or the tenon cutting jig I used is uh, a pretty accurate fit. To get the panel started, I've got stock that is smooth on two sides and I'm using the bandsaw to rip out a piece from each side that is just over a quarter inch and then using the planer to finish them to exactly a quarter inch. A lot of folks rush through this, but uh, I like to sort of slow down and imagine what's the best way to arrange the pieces, what pieces look best together. Uh, I've got a lot of pieces with a lot of figured grain and I'm putting them together so they'll be on one side and I've got other pieces that uh, are more unique and smoother in texture. Here I am uh, doing a glue up of these very thin pieces. And I'll show a little bit of this, or a good bit of this rather. Uh, it might help some folks when you've got a lot of little pieces that are thin, you've got to clamp the top as well as the bottom. You can't just clamp it up like a tabletop. And so you work one board at a time, or at least I work one board at a time, uh, where I put a call on the, the table they use as a clamp two piece and then another call across the seam and I use long clamps that can reach to that press down call. Uh, so at the same time I'm pressing in and down and you can only do one one seam or one glue up at a time this way so it's pretty slow to glue up uh, larger panels out of thin pieces but it, uh, it beats not being able to do it at all. When the panels were fully glued up and dry, I used the cross-cut sled to true them up. Trying to be really accurate, I clamp all of the styles together, uh, make sure they're absolutely lined up exactly right, and then mark the locations uh, for the dados for the uh, drawer webs to go into so that they're all in theory in the exact same position. Uh, full on hand tool woodworkers would probably do this differently, but I think a router is a fantastic tool for uh, making these dados. So I have the matching side styles clamped together and I'm using a square to line up a zero clearance fence for the router, not just lining it up to the line, but also making sure it's absolutely square. And then from there, I can use the router to cut through the first style, which is the back, to make the through cut, and then I'll stop on the second style, which has the stop data. You'd be surprised how much variation you can get by pressing down hard or not, and so I always check the depth of the cut to be sure.
The router leaves a round uh, edge in the stop dado, so I simply cleaned it out with a chisel. Before assembling a component, I like to give everything a good pass with a hand plane to make sure it's finished ready. The panel glue up is uneventful. I've got uh, fully milled and planed styles and rails. I have a center panel that's been uh, finished with uh, Osmo and I'm simply gluing them up, making sure it's square and aligned correctly. Since the uh, cuts for the drawer webs have already been made, uh, it's really important to be sure that the styles are lined up correctly with one another. I didn't plane the interface of the styles and rails because I'm always uh, cautious about it impacting the fit of the tenon, so I give them a good sanding. Last step for this piece is to plane the edges. Since the top's got to be finished before it can uh, go on, since you have to finish both sides, I'm going ahead and moving to the top and getting it glued up. With the panels done, I can move on to the drawer webs and I'm going to go ahead and cut the style portion to length. To cut the rail portion of the drawer webs to length, I've got to determine where the webs are going to lay on the panels. So here I am drawing in a 1 8 inch offset on the front side because I like a slight reveal. Uh, it allows you to, to not have to be absolutely perfect with your drawer construction. And here I'm clamping two of the, the rail pieces of the drawer web material and marking a quarter inch offset in the rear for a panel. That lets me perfectly mark the length of the style portion of the drawer web so I don't have to measure or guess. I know it'll end up exactly the way I want it. Before moving on with the webs, the only face that's really going to show is the front, so I give it a good uh, plane. Since the front portion of the drawer web sits in a stop dado, I've got a cut a one quarter inch relief so that it will uh, slide into its slot and still have an exposed edge. Easiest and fastest way to put the drawer webs together is with uh, floating tenons. So I'm using the, the dreaded domino here. I've done this in the past with regular mortise and tenons. 
It's the same thing, but this is a whole lot quicker. To cut the domino slots for the uh, style portion of the drawer web, I've simply clamped a uh, piece of wood to the workbench, so that serves as a stop so I can cut the uh, appropriate slots. Glue up of the drawer webs is pretty uneventful, assuming you've, you've cut your mortises and tenons correctly if you're doing that, or in my case, the uh, using the domino. Uh, the one thing to really pay attention to here is they have to be perfectly square. If, if one or two or more are, are not square, or if two are out of square in different uh, areas, you're, you're really gonna have a hard time making the carcass come together, so you'll You'll see that I take a long time to be sure that every corner is as square as I can make it. Prior to glue up or even dry fit, I've got a mock piece of the drawer web front style and I'm test fitting it and trimming as needed to be sure that it fits perfectly and that the front of the uh, drawer web piece will align with that mark I've made for the correct reveal. At that point, that's the fit I'm looking for. And like a fool, I forgot to cut the one quarter inch uh, rabbit on the back uh, style for the, the back of the carcass. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that now because I just thought of it. The initial glue up is rather complex if you're if you're trying to maintain squareness. Uh, I'll show enough of it here that you you get an idea. Uh, I'm probably going to show too much, but there may be folks struggling to figure out how to do a, a glue up of a piece of casework like this. Uh, I start with epoxy if it's if it's something that I really want to hold, and so I've got the. Uh, panels taped off and I've mixed up some West Systems epoxy with a little bit of filler and I will use uh, squares to hold each piece together. So with the, the bottom web held square I can start getting the top web installed and apply the same square bracing so that uh, both of those pieces are as square as I can get it uh, to the, uh, the panel. With the bottom panel clamped to the workbench, the side pieces clamped and held square, the top goes on and the same system is applied where it gets uh, two square braces. And the back is the same, so I'll go ahead and skip that, but you end up with four braces per side. So this is what the behemoth looks like, and there is that adage, you can never have too many clamps, and I guess this proves it to a certain degree. Now at this point, the shape of the carcass is set, so the other drawer webs can go in simply as they lay. So I'm putting the middle one in here. Uh, and I have the ability to slide it in from the back after I put epoxy in the, the dados. 
And one thing you can see is I've left the corner square braces in the back uh, just to be sure that as I'm manhandling it, I don't move it out of square while I put these other pieces in. This is the epoxy I use. Uh, it's West Systems epoxy. I also use the 403 uh, microfibers. They're really fantastic for joints that you, you want to fill up and hold well. The last two drawer webs go in simultaneously, uh, very similar to the last. Mix up the epoxy, epoxy the joints, and slide them in from the back so that uh, that front stopped rabbit or, or dado uh, allows the drawer web simply to go in and seat. The top was too big to put on the crosscut sled, so I'm I'm doing the poor man's uh, uh, approach here of cut, flip, and cut. And notice the expert use of the stomach as a third hand. Uh, I knew that would come in useful one day. One of the last steps for the carcass is the top drawer web, and typically the top drawer web is dovetailed into the styles uh, of the side panels, and that, that really adds a lot of uh, torsion strength so that those panels can't pull apart. Uh, I've got to go ahead and cut the dovetails. Now for the front, I use two, and for the back, I use just one large one. And like any dovetail, you uh, saw and uh, clean out. And uh, you guys have seen me cut plenty of dovetails, and you've probably cut plenty yourselves. So I won't show too much of this. With the carcass on its side and having marked the location where the tails were on the top web, uh, you can go ahead and cut the half blind in the side of the carcass. And I always have a hard time with this because it, you're cutting the opposite side of a drawer. Instead of starting at the top and angling the saw, you've got to start on the side and tilt the saw. Uh, so it's pretty different. Uh, so I always struggle with it. Anyway, uh, once you get them cut, you can clean them out as per normal. I have a fishtail chisel that's probably as old as I am that uh, uh, works for dovetails. Problem is, is it's it's the older uh, style, so uh, it's pretty wide, and uh, today's dovetails are so small, I, I can't use it in a lot of them. But uh, for this larger one, it really helps clean it out. Of course, another way of cleaning out the waste in a half-blind dovetail is simply to use a zero-clearance router fit fence and go in with a router set to the right depth. Uh, it will make short work of cleaning out that half-blind. After routing, you simply need to clean out the sides, uh, assuming you stayed well away from the saw cut. Uh, but in my experience, after you router out the waste and a half blind, the sides are fairly easy to cut out.
with the dovetails cut on the top drawer web and matching uh, sockets cut on the carcass uh, or the sides, uh, the last step is simply to, to glue the piece in. So I'll leave you with a example of just how warped this wood was and how challenging it was to make it work. That's all I had left after working up that rough stock. And here's where the carcass is now. So look for part two. We'll make drawers and finish it.